Hey, Victoria, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Town Talk. And we've got a special guest here today to talk about all kinds of stuff I'm sure you want to know about. And that's our assistant city manager, Mike Atien. So, Mike, you have not been on our show before, have you? No, I have not. And uh, good morning, uh, Ashley and uh, Sam and mm -hmm. to uh, Victorians watching. No, mm -hmm. I have not been on the show. So this is my first mm -hmm. time and I'm delighted to be here. Good. We're glad to have you. So we always kick it off with a fun fact. Okay. So share mm -hmm. a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into all the fun, knit and gritty. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been uh, here in Victoria for mm -hmm. about like, two years and four months, and I've enjoyed it very much. Uh, the people here are very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they love the community, and I've grown to love the community. I have a 17-year-old son. Uh, he loves uh, Victoria, and uh, he's having a good time at his school. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed it. Very cool. Well, before we go any further, we have to announce our fun guest co-host of the day too. So do you want to kind of introduce yourself to our audience as well? Uh, yes, I am Sam Hankins, communications specialist. I'm super fun, like she said. And uh, do you want me to do fun fact also? Yes, fun fact. Okay, so when She's I'm- has got a lot, by the way. Yeah, I'm real interesting. Um, so when I'm, not, when I'm not writing about the city and helping mm -hmm. them do their thing, I also write uh, plays. And I'm in the um, Here Be Monsters theater group here in town, mm -hmm. and also the Coast Writers, which is a group that writes at the mm -hmm. Victoria Public Library. Very so. cool. Well, I, I should mm -hmm. mention one of my sure. fun facts is uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. So right. I'm also um, an adjunct professor. So I've taught for over 20 years at UTSA and other colleges. So mm -hmm. I teach uh, community development, economic development, and housing policy. Mm -hmm. So that's a fun fact that people don't know about me, that I'm a, actually a college uh, professor as well. Well, two things yes. there. One, we're gonna talk about all of what you just said, so that's perfect. We're talking to someone with not only 20 years of adjunct experience, but also in your, your career, right? You used to work mm -hmm. in Virginia and San Antonio. Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, that's correct. So I've been in, involved uh, or working for local governments mm -hmm. for uh, almost 30 years. So I started my career in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I started off as a planner where I moved up in the uh, organization, the city of Richmond, to become assistant to the city manager. And from there, I moved to Roanoke, Virginia, uh, where I was the director of housing and neighborhood services. And then from there, I moved to Washington, D.C., where I was the director of urban initiatives for, the, for ULI. That's the Urban Land Institute. Mm -hmm. That was the national as a national nonprofit, uh, helping to revitalize cities throughout the country. And then from there, I moved back to Richmond to be the assistant city manager for the city of Richmond, Virginia. And then from there, moved to San Antonio. So I, I lived in San Antonio, worked for the city of San Antonio mm -hmm. for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I served in different roles with the city of San Antonio. I was the, um, I guess, the director of real estate for San Antonio. Uh, assistant Director for Capital Projects, Director of Neighborhood Revitalization, and the Promise Zone. So after almost 10 years, I decided to come to Victoria. And we're glad you did. And I am delighted to be here. Awesome. Well, let's talk about some of your experience and how you've applied it to Victoria. Um, but first, can you tell us, maybe some of our viewers are watching and they're saying, wow, this, this guy sounds really experienced. What does he do for the city? Can you talk about the structure? Who reports to you, the, the di different departments, mm -hmm. and then kind of what your overall priorities are? Sure. Um, so we have uh, Jesus Garza, mm -hmm. who's our city manager. And um, the city manager has two assistant direct uh, city managers, and I'm one of them. And I have direct oversight of... Um, the departments that essentially focus on quality of life, neighborhood improvements. So I directly oversee the Department of Development Services, mm -hmm. uh, the Environmental Services, Parks and Recreation, mm -hmm. Public Works and Engineering, as well as the Housing Finance Corporation. I also serve as a liaison to the neighborhood groups, uh, essentially focusing on neighborhood revitalization, economic development, and so on. Very nice. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is a lot, but I think we have a great team mm -hmm. at the city, uh, great leadership, mm -hmm. um, and our employees are just fantastic. Uh, they are first class, uh, and I've, I've enjoyed working with all of them. Awesome. Well, one thing we didn't mention, Sam's being um, candid here and very 
subtle. But she writes mm -hmm. all of our news releases for the city. Uh -huh. So she got to work with you directly on a city corner column, news release about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So that's a big topic. You know, I know you're working very heavily with the community. Um, they have a lot of questions. Recently, I think, Sam, mm -hmm. didn't you post the news release to our social media channels? Uh, yeah, that's right. We did a story about a new uh, infill housing program that's coming up, and that got a lot of traction. It seemed like people were really interested in it, like maybe mm -hmm. they'd never heard of it before. Uh, but before we get into that, I did want to kind of talk about, because you mentioned being involved with different community groups and that kind of thing. And when it comes to issues like, you know, affordable housing and resources for people, there are a lot of different organizations out there that handle mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And the city is just one part of that puzzle. Would, that, would you right. say that's kind of uh, That is correct. Uh, because the issue of affordable housing, mm -hmm. sometimes we call it workforce housing, is very uh, complex. Right. And it requires um, really a multitude mm -hmm. of agencies mm -hmm. uh, to meet that the mm -hmm. affordable housing need of the community. Mm -hmm. So we have um, the partners include the Victoria Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. So the Housing Authority uh, under the leadership of the board and also Brandy Hilbreth who is the executive director, they provide fixed you know, rent types of uh, mm -hmm. apartments. So if you're looking for, uh, for an apartment that mm -hmm. is uh, affordable, uh, you can always call the housing authority. Mm -hmm. Other players in the uh, housing arena, you have Midcoast Family Services. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide uh, rental assistance as well as Community Action Agency, mm -hmm. uh, Salvation Army, uh, and so on. So the city has a public nonprofit, mm -hmm. uh, and it's called Housing Finance Corporation. Mm -hmm. And we are beginning to play a small role in the uh, housing arena. And the role there is essentially bringing in private developers mm -hmm. to develop quality, affordable housing mm -hmm. for our working families and individuals. So it sounds like where people will go for assistance will kind of depend on what their needs are, whether it's mm -hmm. like short-term shelter, rental assistance. Uh, but the uh, infill housing program, which is the new one, that's going to be kind of meeting uh, a new need for people who maybe are, can can get into housing, can get into a house, but might have some trouble with like affordable, you know, prices are crazy, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's correct. So if you look at the uh, current data, mm -hmm. the median sales price for a house uh, in Victoria has increased significantly mm -hmm. uh, since the past, over the past five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, it is $226,000. So if you, mm -hmm. if you want to buy a house in Victoria, the data is telling us that it will cost you about 226000 So that's mm -hmm. really um, unaffordable mm -hmm. for many individuals. So, so yes, you have different groups that provide, mm -hmm. uh, that tries to provide affordable housing. Um, mm -hmm. But technically, the goal is to make sure that no one or the individual does not pay more than 30% mm -hmm. of his or her income towards housing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's, that's the definition of affordable housing. Right. The housing is affordable to you if you do not pay more than 30% mm -hmm. of your gross income. So, yes, so uh, we um, you have different partners mm -hmm. that provide the housing. So mm -hmm. if you're uh, looking for shelter, uh, you, would, or you would go to mm -hmm. Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for the uh, low-income housing mm -hmm. that is... Uh, uh, some individuals don't pay very much in rent. That's mm -hmm. the housing authority. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us, with the infill housing program, mm -hmm. we are looking to promote uh, home ownership mm -hmm. uh, because what we are looking to do with the infill housing mm -hmm. is to really, like you said in your article, Sam, is to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, that's right. Essentially, uh, working to acquire vacant lots mm -hmm. uh, that are blighted in our mm -hmm. community and partner with a private builder to build mm -hmm. single family homes right. that is affordable mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to our residents. Mm -hmm. So we know in the city, uh, we have uh, over 1,000 lots uh, that are just vacant, mm -hmm. and some of them have code uh, liens on them or mm -hmm. cases. So the, and those lots are overgrown with grass, all mm -hmm. kinds of uh, issues. Um, environmental issues. So the goal is to acquire mm -hmm. those uh, vacant lots or receive donations. We have mm -hmm. individuals who have those vac vacant lots mm -hmm. and they owe so much 
money in liens mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, tall, you know, weeds mm -hmm. or sure. demolition. So they can donate the property to the mm -hmm. Housing Finance Corporation, which mm -hmm. is the housing nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, so they can donate that, and the goal is to uh, work with a private builder mm -hmm. to build affordable single-family homes on those lots. Mm -hmm. So it will be twofold in, th in that it will, one, address the homeownership mm -hmm. you know, issue in terms mm -hmm. of pro make, providing a homeownership opportunity to our residents, at the same time help to revitalize right. our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm because the vacant lots are not contributing. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there are really properties that are sitting there mm -hmm. vacant, not generating you mm -hmm. know, property tax. Right. And the city is spending over $100,000 a year wow. to maintain those properties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the goal there is to get those properties back sure. on, the ta on the tax roll and also provide home ownership An opportunities. Option, right, yes. for people who are in mm -hmm. need. That's correct. That's great. So it sounds like a win-win, really for everyone involved. It is a win-win, yeah. and uh, we've gotten positive feedback mm -hmm. uh, from the community regarding the sure. program. Mm -hmm. um, because again, it's revitalizing our neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, and also providing the home ownership opportunity right. for mm -hmm. our working families. Mm -hmm. And again, the city is one piece, like Sam was saying, to the bigger picture puzzle of affordable housing in mm -hmm. Victoria. I mean, this mm -hmm. is like not only Victoria, this is statewide. This is a national mm -hmm. situation right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not just us who are facing that. So I appreciate your efforts on behalf of the city for spearheading that. Yes. Can you talk about a few others? I know that we talked about home ownership, but now let's switch gears to some of those affordable housing apartments that you recently embarked on, Odom Apartments. Yes, that's uh, correct. So Enchanted Gardens. Yes, thank you, Ashley, for asking that. So we are working on uh, the infill housing, as you said. Mm -hmm. So we've all, we're also addressing the rental housing mm -hmm. side uh, because mm -hmm. we know that uh, in Victoria, the median rent for a two-bedroom apartment is, a, is over $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So that's the median rent. So it's fairly expensive to rent uh, uh, in Victoria. So again, we are a small piece in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we've done uh, with the Housing Finance Corporation, which is a public nonprofit, mm -hmm. essentially is to par partner with a private developer uh, out of uh, Austin to develop the Enchanted Gardens apartments. I don't know if you've seen them, mm -hmm. but they are at uh, 600 block of Ben Jordan. Mm -hmm. They are under mm -hmm. construction. So those apartments uh, will rent from $315 mm -hmm. a month for a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. We're also working with, with another developer mm -hmm. um, from uh, San Antonio called the NRP Group mm -hmm. to develop uh, another apartment uh, complex uh, on the south side called the Odom, it's on Odom Street. Mm -hmm. uh, so that apartment should break ground uh, mm -hmm. sometime this uh, summer. And we are looking at 324 units. So the Enchanted Gardens Apartments on Ben Jordan has 168 mm -hmm. units. And the one on uh, the south side has 324 mm -hmm. units. Enchanted Gardens, when is that gonna open up to the public? So. Uh, they will begin uh, leasing in July, and the apartments will be completely done uh, by the end of uh, this year. I saw the progress. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It is uh, I was beautiful. at the groundbreaking, and I'm driving by, and I'm like, wow, these people yes. build this thing fast. Yeah, we, we're very uh, proud of it. The mm -hmm. Housing Finance Corporation mm -hmm. has done a great job working with the, uh, with the developer. Right. Uh, the apartments will have uh, modern amenities, including a granite countertop, uh, the units will have nice. uh, washer and dryer hookups. Um, it it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I've uh, toured the uh, development. It looks great. So awesome. I can't wait for it to open. Very mm -hmm. cool. Good. Yeah, we, Same. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say one of the goals that you always talk about with the Housing Finance Corporation is providing not just housing, but like decent, safe, uh, sanitary. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just based on what I've heard about these new apartments and the concept art and photos that you've sent over, it does seem like a good place for, for people to live and, you know, a, a, a dignified uh, living situation that, right. that folks are going to have, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we want everyone to live um, in a quality, I guess, decent, safe 
housing, mm -hmm. uh, a place where they can feel comfortable uh -huh. raising their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the intent. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. we have that with the Enchanted Gardens right. Apartments. Right. And talking about private developers, um, I believe there are some uh, more projects coming up that are uh, senior housing specific. Just going to ask about talk that. a little more about those. <laughs> well, that's good. It's a good, good, very good question. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, because of the efforts, we, we are seeing more developers who are interested mm -hmm. in uh, coming to Victoria to help uh, build uh, single family and, uh, and multifamily That's housing. Awesome. This is great. Yeah. Um, so we did have uh, about five developers who applied to the state uh, mm -hmm. to build uh, senior housing, apartments mm -hmm. for senior housing. Mm -hmm. So the city council did approve a resolution uh, of support or resolutions of support for those projects. Mm -hmm. And they are now going through the state uh, review process. So that's housing for seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that we've heard, um, Ashley and mm -hmm. Sam, is that uh, yes, we, it's a good thing to provide the affordable housing, but we need to make sure that we address the needs of the mm -hmm. seniors. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we are working with those developers mm -hmm to hopefully get one of those uh, uh, apartments, mm -hmm. uh, one of those deals approved by the state. So mm -hmm. uh, we should hear uh, something, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, we should get news from the state, I would say in July, if one mm -hmm. of those uh, developments mm -hmm. um, have been approved mm -hmm. by the state. So that would bring, again, more affordable housing, especially for seniors, mm -hmm. to the city of Victoria, mm -hmm. which is a, really a need. Uh, affordable housing for seniors is critical right. today. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're hitting the needs of a lot of different groups within Victoria, not just one. Mm -hmm. So that's really neat to hear. Yeah, and I love that you're working with private developers on so many of these and using different kind of uh, mm -hmm. resources because that shows us that we're being good stewards of our resources as the city. You know, I think sometimes if I post an article and, you know, mm -hmm. we have some people who just read the headline, no shame, we all do it. <laughs> and uh, they might have the misconception, oh, the city is coming in and building these apartments and building these houses. And that's not really the case. Right. It's a lot of times private money is... is that is these. correct. The city right. does not build... Uh -huh. uh, housing. That's right. not what we do. So we, we essentially let the private developers do that. That's mm -hmm. um, so, um, but we, we facilitate, mm -hmm. you know, we help. Uh, but in terms of actual building, managing, mm -hmm. that's not the city's role. It's the private sector's right. role. Right. And I think you guys are doing a great job at that. So speaking of public-private partnerships, I feel like this is the perfect segue into Maybe we can wrap it up with economic development. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of people always have the question, why can't we get a Luby's back, right? <laughs> I know you do. I do. Um, so questions like that. Can you talk about overall, first off, what your role is in economic development, but also mm -hmm. maybe even talk to Retail Coach? I think that sure. might interest a lot of folks. So my role in economic development is uh, essentially to work or partner with our various uh, the various entities like mm -hmm. the Victoria Economic Development Corporation, mm -hmm. the Sales Tax Corporation, to essentially attract, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, businesses and also large employers to Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really a partnership working with uh, those players to bring in um, those, uh, really create more jobs, mm -hmm. attract and retain businesses and mm -hmm. so forth. So one of the things that we do is we partner with a retail coach. Mm -hmm. uh, so the city, uh, through the sales tax, has a contract uh, with a retail coach mm -hmm. to help uh, attract retail, mm -hmm. a quality retail to Victoria. Uh, but now I should say that about 99% of the retailers that come to Victoria, mm -hmm. they come on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, so because they use, they do their market research, right. uh, their market analysis uh, to determine if Victoria is a good place for them to have their, mm -hmm. their what business. What are some of the variables that they look at? Well, they look mm -hmm. at, uh, the most important one is really the traffic counts. Mm -hmm. So they want to be uh, one if, if, if there is a lot of traffic in the community. Sure. They also look at population. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, retailers, they will not go in a community unless they have 25,000 people mm -hmm. or 50,000. So they look at population, they look at traffic counts, mm -hmm. um, and those are the two main things that they look at, is the population, traffic counts, mm -hmm. and they have other variables that they look at. But they, most of them have a software mm -hmm. 
that they use to come up with the uh, with the uh, to make to make their decisions. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I would say about 90, 99 percent of the retailers that come to Victoria, they come uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. Now we do mm -hmm. uh, from time to time incentivize uh, a retailer, especially if that retailer will bring quality jobs, mm -hmm. uh, also will be a, a quality uh, establishment. Mm -hmm. So from time to time we do that, but for the most part, most retailers come based on their analysis sure. and so forth. So we would love to um, have a Luby's, so we are- mm -hmm. Or I hear Cracker, cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, so we, <laughs> so we uh, actually, uh, we talk to the retail coach quite often mm -hmm. uh, about Cracker Barrel, Luby's, mm -hmm. yeah. and we are, and I'm working on that. So, That's awesome. uh, so I'm hopeful that we will um, hopefully get a Luby. Hopefully is the word, the key word, because yeah, at the end of the hopefully. day, it is a, what did we say, a free market? Yeah, the it's free, a free market. market. So they yeah. make their decision. They make their decision based we can't on data. Make it for them. Uh -huh. Exactly. If they, we they, would, then. Yeah, we mm -hmm. would definitely. If we could yeah. make that decision, we would mm -hmm. have a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Today. Yes, we would. Uh, <laughs> but but I should yeah. say that Victoria is on the radar. Yeah, of, that's good. Of uh, many uh, restaurants right. and so forth. So. Yeah. So are, there are some proactive efforts there. Uh, very much so. Awesome. Very much so. We want to bring in quality mm -hmm. retail restaurants uh, to Victoria, mm -hmm. and. Awesome. Um, and, and you and I have talked a lot about the city's relationship with the retail coach when we've done stories about new businesses mm -hmm. coming to town and that kind of thing. So it, it sounds to me like we are doing a lot to really market ourselves to the wider mm -hmm. world. But as far as like who's buying what we're selling, that's up to them. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. um, all we can do is uh, market Victoria, mm -hmm. you know, talk about the uh, quality of life mm -hmm. of the city. That's right. And that's one of the things that we've been working on um, diligently mm -hmm. is improving the quality of life in Victoria. Mm -hmm. So we, we've, we are spending a lot more money when it comes to streets, mm -hmm. uh, parks, right? Um, because have, if you have a great quality of life, that's more attractive sure. for the uh, retailers, the, the businesses, and mm -hmm. the companies. Right. And I know we haven't finalized this agreement yet, but with the Home Depot renovation with you know the loop that they're trying to push back mm -hmm. so that you can exit into what will be a retail Correct. outlet area, um, give us just a hint of the timing on that. So, uh, so the the ramp uh, relocation, mm -hmm. or I guess the exit, the off right. exit ramp, uh, so will be uh, um, will be done, will be completed mm -hmm. uh, by the end of this month, and then the uh, developer who's building the retail shopping center uh, will begin construction of the first store uh, in uh, early May. Awesome. So he has already cleared mm -hmm. the land. So if you drive by and you next to Home Depot, mm -hmm. you will see the first site. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first of 10 wow. uh, retail establishments. Mm -hmm. So there'll be 10 retail stores next to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the front of it, we'll have seven pad sites for restaurants and others as right, well. Right. So, so construction on that uh, should begin again. The first store mm -hmm. um, will begin um, in uh, probably early May. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So by the time this episode airs, you might start to see the first store. That's, That's exciting. Tell us what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we may or may not know. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. We really want to know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited for the community to hear the news and just excited about all that you guys are doing. Not just you guys, but all of the other partnering agencies that are in our community, providing resources to Victorians. So um, with that, can you just wrap us up by quickly talking about I know we haven't had much time, right? But neighborhood revitalization, you know, that's one big piece of your, uh, your wheelhouse. Talking about code enforcement, you know, neighborhood cleanups. Sure. The street, the, uh, street and sidewalk improvements and the LED light project. That's yes. a lot. So uh, revitalizing, <laughs> it's, it's a lot, but, but, but no, but, it's, uh, but revitalizing the, our older neighborhoods is one of our top priorities. Uh, because again, we've always said that we want all of uh, the neighborhoods in Victoria mm -hmm. to be uh, to prosper, to do right. well. So we are focusing on revitalizing uh, neighborhoods on the south side, uh, parts of the north side, mm -hmm. uh, the Queen City neighborhood, and others. Right. A little bit so, of every area. What's that? A little bit of little, every. A little area. bit of every area. So mm -hmm. not just the uh, south side, right. but everywhere, mm -hmm. because we want the entire city 
to thrive. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. So revitalization essentially includes um, building housing, improving the streets, uh, improving the overall quality of life of the residents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it starts with uh, housing because it primarily, revitalization focuses on three things, is housing, the people, and the neighborhood. So, so we are focusing on revitalizing uh, our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do the. We start with the housing. We talk about the infill housing. We also talk about public safety. Mm -hmm. So we are. So that's why we are working to improve the lighting right. in our mm -hmm. sit throughout our city. So we are partnering with AEP to change uh, or replace the uh, high pressure sodium lights mm -hmm. to LED lights because the high mm -hmm. pressure sodium lights they are kind of the yellowish and they don't emit as much mm -hmm. lighting, mm -hmm. so, so changing them to mm -hmm. LED will give us uh, better lighting, more mm -hmm. directed lighting. Right. And of course, it's, it, LED has less light pollution mm -hmm. uh, because it's directed downward right. and it's, uh, it's much safer. It improves walkability, uh, improves safety in the community mm -hmm. and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of the revitalization is the the neighborhood cleanups mm -hmm. and code enforcement, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we have a great uh, department in uh, environmental services that essentially uh, do, they organize the neighborhood cleanups, uh, working with the uh, community appearance mm -hmm. in uh, KVB, which is Keep Victoria Beautiful. Right. So we do two neighborhood cleanups uh, per year. Uh, the last one we did was in Silver City. Mm -hmm. and I heard was, there was like over 200 people yeah mm -hmm. so yeah the community not yes. just city staff that's that's who showed up to help and that's part of the revitalization mm -hmm. is uh to include the residents mm -hmm. from the neighborhood so it's not just city staff but it's right. people who live in the neighborhood and also the larger community mm -hmm. because again it takes a, a village mm -hmm. uh, to revitalize neighborhoods so we need right. everyone involved so we do the cleanups uh twice a year mm -hmm. um so um and that's part of the revitalization. And of course, the street improvements. Mm -hmm. So we are spending a lot more, um, uh, I guess, money mm -hmm. on uh, street improvements because we know street, uh, improving our streets is a top priority for right. our community. Mm -hmm. so, so last year, we spent about $29 million mm -hmm. on streets mm -hmm. improvements. And next year, we are looking at spending even more right. on streets. Mm -hmm. So revitalizing our neighborhoods, that includes housing, mm -hmm. lighting, uh, code enforcement, and of course our streets. Right. And also help it working with the uh, Workforce Solutions Alamo, I mean, uh, Workforce Solutions Golden Crescent. Right. Um, working with them to uh, make sure that the people, the residents have access to jobs mm -hmm. uh, right. as well. So it's really an inclusive, process mm -hmm. uh, to um, improve quality of life mm -hmm. in our neighborhoods. Right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, so just to wrap us up, is there anything else, Mike, you'd like to share with the public about what you guys are working on? Well, um, I would like to uh, really thank you sure. uh, for uh, the great work that you do and also uh, thank the, uh, the public, mm -hmm. uh, the, the citizens of Victoria, for their continued support. Um, we are working diligently to improve quality of life, um, to make Victoria uh, a destination city. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we sincerely appreciate everyone's support in that. Um, and always call us if you have any questions, mm -hmm. um, and we'd be glad to talk to them. Speaking of, what is that number? Well, uh, they can call us at uh, 485 3030. And that is the city manager's office, in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. Just ask for Mike Atian, and he'll hook you up. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if you want to reach any of us in communications, you can contact mm -hmm. us at 485-3110. Visit our website at victoriatx.gov forward slash news for all of the cool, mm -hmm. fun, breaking news that me and Sam work on together. Right. And, um, you know, just continue to watch these town talks as well. Visit our YouTube mm -hmm. channel, our local cable channels, TV 15, mm -hmm. which is on channels 15 and 115, and all our other communication methods. I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many ways yeah. to get subscribed, like our City View newsletter. Mm -hmm. It comes out weekly. Mm -hmm. Check out our social media channels. Those are fun mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mike, I just want to thank you again for your time. I know you're a busy man, so we're going to let you head out. And then I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Sam, for being awesome and very fun. That's true. Co-host. And we'll check you next time. Have a great day. <laughs>
Yeah, 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 yeah